All right, joining us now to react to all of today's big news, holding people accountable, deep state, people that abuse power, and most the biggest cor corruption scandal we've seen. Texas Senator Ted Cruz is with us. Uh, Senator, between the media and people that we entrust with the powerful tools of intelligence, to see that they rigged an investigation with Hillary, they, they lied and committed fraud before FISA courts, uh, purposely, we now know, because they were all warned about who paid for it. They omitted that, what Christopher Steele was all about, defeating Trump, and then bludgeoning the president, trying to undo a, a duly elected president the way they have. You're a constitutional scholar. You, I think, appreciate how severe this is for the country. How do we rectify this so it never happens again? Well, let me say, first of all, this weekend was a very good weekend for the president. But even more fundamentally, it was a very good weekend for the country. Uh, we've had now two years of this special prosecutor investigation, and during the entire time, virtually every Democrat and all the media has been breathlessly covering every minute of it, insisting collusion, 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 collusion. Well, we now have the report from the special counsel. The special counsel concluded there was no evidence, zero evidence of, of collusion. That's a big deal. Not only that. But we also now know that both the Attorney General Bill Barr and the Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein concluded that none of the evidence supports charges of obstruction for justice, so obstruction of justice, which means everything the Democrats and media have been talking about for two years was lacking in a factual basis. And, and, and the entire media has egg on their face. And, and what are they doing now? They're, they're not apologizing. They're not backtracking. They're, they're not saying, gosh, our facts were wrong. Instead, they're attacking. We're seeing every Democrat pivot to say, oh, no, 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 ne never mind about conclusion, never mind about crimes or evidence. And, and mark my word, Sean, the House Democrats are going to impeach the president anyway, not because of any evidence, not because of any crimes, but because of the fact that he's Donald Trump and they hate Donald Trump. And, and, and it's showing just how extreme they are. You know, you went up against a guy, uh, Beto O'Rourke, as they call him. Um, I have my own <laughs> names for him. I won't, I won't drag you into my mess. Um, but I got to tell you something. I, I've seen Benjamin Netanyahu as a Churchillian figure that... Yes. You, was almost, was alone, the sole voice of moral clarity against modern evil in our time until Donald Trump got into office. And I see that O'Rourke literally went after Netanyahu as an ally of racists. And we know that Reuters covered uh, the, the real story of your opponent yeah. yep. for yep. over a year. They made a deal with, with Beto to hurt you in that election and help him. Well, listen, when it comes to media bias, the Reuters stories is truly a smoking gun. Back in 2017, they had evidence that Beto may have committed multiple felonies. The reporter interviewed Beto on the record and he confirmed it, but then they cut a deal and said, okay, we won't report on it until after the 2018 election. Why? Because they want the Democrat to win. They wanted Beto to beat me. Now that Beto's running against Bernie and against all the other leftists, now Reuters will report it. And, and, and it's, the media is in bed with the far left wing of the Democratic Party. But I'll tell you, this also reveals, I mean, you're talking about Prime Minister Netanyahu, who, who, who I know well and consider a friend, and, and Churchillian is exactly the right adjective for him. One of the things this reveals, listen, Beto's trying to appeal to the extreme left in the Democratic Party, and one of the ways you do that is by launching anti-Israel attacks. I, I, I was at the AIPAC conference this week. Not a single Democratic presidential candidate came to the conference. And, and, and we saw just a couple of weeks ago the House of Representatives couldn't pass a simple bill condemning anti-Semitism. Well, I'll tell you, Sean, I've introduced a resolution in the Senate condemning anti-Semitism. I, I think we need to take it up, and I think we need to put every senator on record. I hope the Democrats are willing to condemn anti-Semitism, the kind of comments these freshman House members are making, things like, it's all about the Benjamins, which is nothing but an anti-Semitic trope. I also have legislation to formally recognize as a matter of statute the Golan Heights as part of Israel. This weekend, the president announced that he's going to do that. I've been urging him and the administration to do that for months. That is a tremendous victory for Israel and America. But we need to take up and pass my legislation to put in federal law that the Golan Heights is part of the nation of Israel. All right, Senator. Um, 
that's unfair. And if you're part of the media and you cover up for that's a campaign contribution in a major way needs to be. Investigated. Is there any universe in which Reuters would cut that deal for a Republican? No. Can, can, can you imagine Reuters question, doing that? Of course. Uh, <laughs> good to see you, Senator. Thank you.